as they travel to our associate pastor, my mom and my dad. I greet them in the precious name of Jesus. And to all ministers, deacons and elders, I greet you in the precious name of Jesus. The theme for this morning service is be ye reconciled to God. Be ye holy, for I am holy. Turn to your neighbor and say, this could be short and sweet. Turn to your neighbor and say short and sweet, because the word of God comes quick and sharp up than any other sword. Amen? The three scripture readings were already read into our hearing, so I will only briefly touch on those readings today. 2 Corinthians 5, chapter 5, verse 11 and 21, read by Ivana, speaks to us about reconciliation. Verse 17 says, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, the new creation has come. The old has gone, the new is here. Tell your neighbor, the new is here. The new is here. Then we skip to verse 19, that God was reconciling the world to himself in Christ, not counting people's sins against them. And he has committed to us the message of reconciliation. Verse 20 says, we are therefore Christ's ambassadors. Point to yourself and say, I am an ambassador. I am an ambassador. As though God were making his appeal through us. We implore you on Christ's behalf, be ye reconciled to God. The charge here today speaks to those who are already in the kingdom of God, who is already in Christ Jesus. If anyone is in Christ, the new creation has come. The old has gone. The new is here. This is telling us that we are made new. New creatures, new beginning. This is a new time. But too many of us are stuck in the old. Yay. If we are in Christ Jesus, the Bible says the new is here today. The new is here now. The old life is gone. A new life has begun. All things have passed away. Behold, all things become new. Be ye reconciled to God. Yes. Paul is telling us that this is a radical transformation. Come on now. So there is no need for us to not be radical in Christ Jesus. Amen. This radical change in our lives is where we begin to live like new creatures, new beings. We walk the walk and we talk the talk. But yet, as Christians, we complain, and we complain, but yet we live in the kingdom of God. Amen. But, um, saints of God, I came to remind us today that we live in Christ Jesus. Amen. We have the authority in Christ Jesus. Daily, we must pray for a renewal of our minds, a renewal of our thoughts, of our actions, our attitudes. Romans 12, 2 says, And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Being reconciled to God changes us on the inside. Amen. This involves a life-changing encounter with God. This means God wipes out our past mistakes when we are reconciled to him. We are to live for him and be ambassadors of Christ to the world by serving Christ and living in his purpose for our lives. We cannot keep living in our bad ways 
Hallelujah. Salvation came to deliver us from sin and allow us to have a relationship with God. Today, God is calling us to a life of holiness. Amen. Be ye holy, right, for holy. I am holy. I wish I had a church right now who believes, still believe in the holiness. I wish I had a church who still believes in righteousness. You see, we forget where we come from and who we are in Christ Jesus. We must remain holy. We must remain righteous in him. You see, saints of God, when we became new creatures, we became holy. We became, I'm trying to break this down so we understand because we come Sunday after Sunday, but yet we go back in our same old ways. We are set apart. We are made different in Christ Jesus. Amen. You and I anointed you and I are chosen you and I are particular people yes. we are called by God Amen. I need you all to understand this because since of God I just see the laziness in the kingdom of God we have to walk in the authority God has given us it is called for us to be holy it is called for us to be righteous. Yeah. We must set upon ourselves. But no, we go right back to our old ways. And for we forget. Some of us don't forget. We just thank God to just forgive us over and over. But God is calling us today to repent. He is calling us to live holy lives. We must kill the desires of our flesh. Stop lying. Stop stealing. Stop the fornication. Stop the gossiping. Stop the bite biting. Stop the rumors. Stop the hatred. Stop the crying and stop the grief because God is not pleased. He is calling us to holiness. Yes. Walk right. We have to stop as people of God distracting other people. Amen. We will not be able to bring others to Christ because we are so distracted with foolishness. When was the last time you told a lost soul about Jesus Christ? Think about it. When was the last time? Some of us can't even think about it because we're so distracted with the cares of this world. We don't have time to stand in the way of sins. Saints of God, we must live holy lives. Those out there, they're looking at us. They're depending on us, but yet, we are stopping them from entering the kingdom of God because they, I don't want to be a Christian like that one. She gossips too much. He talks too much. We are hindering the people of God. So today, saints of God, this is calling for a reality check within ourselves. We must be intentional about living holy lives. I declare and I decree that the children of God in this house will live and stand for holiness. Amen. There are going to be times when we are going to be tested but yet you remain holy. There are going to be situations in our lives where people are going to stand against us, talk evil about us, but yet you must remain holy. There are going to be times when you want to just give up, when you just want to stop, but you must remain holy. Be on your guard. Stand firm in the faith. Be 
courageous, be strong, be ye holy. Some of us are just wavering, going with the motions of our faith. And that's because we're not standing firm on our salvation. You have the authority, you have the power invested in you to stand for holiness, stand for righteousness. God is calling his people to a higher level. Some of us just give up so easily. We fill our lives with so many different things other than what is of God. I go to work every day. Listen to me. I do not get distracted easily. I go to work. I talk. I be very pleasant. And I get my job done. I don't let for one thing to get my job Amen, done. And sister. I leave. I cannot go with the gossip. I cannot go with the destruction. I cannot go with the talk because I am on a mission to serve God. You never going to say, Crystal said this. Crystal said that. Because I don't have time for it. We must live holy lives. The only way we can do this is by staying in his presence. You see, sometimes some of us just come in his presence when we walk through these doors of writing. During the week, be outside, outside living our best life, out the presence of God. But when we come in these doors, we want to be holy. God is not pleased. He is calling us to live holy lives Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and back again Sunday. This is a lifestyle, things of God. We must walk the walk. We must talk the walk. We must eat the word of God, drink the word of God, because God is calling us to live holy lives. God requires us to live holy because it honors him. We have too many hypocrites, too many disobedient, too many unruly, lawless people calling themselves Christian, tearing down the kingdom of God. It's time to stop. We cannot allow unbelievers to mock, ignore, or totally reject the kingdom of God. Amen. The Bible says, blessed is the man that walketh not Amen. in the counsel of the ungodly, no, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat Amen. of the scornful. But his delight is in the, is in the law of the Lord, and doth he meditate Amen. day and night. See, the God, we have to meditate day and night on the law of the Lord. Saints of God, we must make the gospel of Jesus Christ attractive again. We have to make people want to come to the kingdom of God by living and living holy lives. They are looking at us. We have an obligation unto God to live holy lives. Amen. God is coming back for a holy church. Stand strong. Stand for holiness. Stand for righteousness. Like I said earlier, holy living is a lifestyle. We must eat, drink, sleep the word of God. When Sister Gayla preached this week, past week, she said, read your Bible, pray every day. Some of us don't even read our Bibles until we get into the house of the Lord. Some of us don't even acknowledge God. We do not pray because we are so distracted. Even in our phones, even on the telephone, we are distracted people of God. But this is a call for us to get back to God, to reconcile to God, be ye holy. He is calling us to be ye holy because he 
is for you. Amen. He is coming back for a glorious church. Not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that it should be holy and without blemish. Saints of God, as I prepared this message, I ask God to help us as believers to stay strong with Him. Some of us are taking our walk with God slightly. Yes. On Friday, Pastor, my youths, the scriptures was read in our hearings, hearing. I said, youths, if the bridegroom was to come, would we be ready? Would our oil be filled? Or will we be left behind? Since the God, we must stay awake. This is a call for readiness. Are we going to be ready when Jesus comes? We do not know the time. We do not know the hour. But he is calling us to live holy. Because when he comes, we want to be ready. And that's it for today. The charge is simple. Be ready. Ready. Be ye reconciled to God because He is holy. Every day, give me oil in my lamp, keep me burning. That's not just a song to sing. We have to keep it burning. It's a lifestyle unto Him. So saints of God, it's not a hard message because God wants us to make sure the word gets clear. Yes, yes. And so it's up to us, each and every one of us, to build the kingdom of God. Yes. And so right now I'm going to ask us to stand to our feet. Yes. And what we're going to do, we're going to pray. We dedicate our lives to God. Amen. It's a time for holiness. It's a time for righteousness. And when we even leave these doors, we want to remain holy with Him. We want to mean in righteousness. Yes. That when we speak to an individual, when we get in contact with somebody, we will be able to share the word of God. And so let us bow our heads as we pray. Dear Heavenly Father, most gracious Lord, we thank you, dear God, because you've given us this word. Dear God, we thank you because we know that lives are going to be changed today, dear God. Dear God, you are a God of deliverance. You are a God of a healing God. We, and we thank you today, dear God, for there is none like you. Dear God, we ask that you set us apart, dear God. Let the words of our mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable unto your sight, dear God, as we minister to individuals, dear God. You give us the word and you give us the anointing, dear God. We ask that we walk in holiness, dear God. We ask that we walk in righteousness in the name of Jesus. Yes, Lord. Dear God, I feel the heaviness within our people, yes, Jesus. Yes, Lord. I ask that you lift it up in the name of Jesus. Renew our minds, dear God. Renew our hearts in the mighty name of Jesus. Dear God, we recommit ourselves to you. You take over. And when we get on the line, dear God, you wake us up. That we stand firm, dear God. That we stand in your will, dear God, and we will not stray. That when the time cometh, that we will be ready in the name of Jesus. Dear God, have your way. Have your way, Father, Jesus. And we thank you. We honor you. Because you are working in us. In your precious name we pray. Amen. Hallelujah.